What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 13 in the 8th grade math questions that North Carolina released this past school year. We can see that we have this table of some uh, quantities that we're not quite sure what they are yet, but each of them has a numeric label, and we're supposed to order them from least to greatest and then do some other stuff so we can get an answer. We'll talk about this stuff in a bit, but for right now, In order to do a question like this, we need to know how to estimate irrational numbers. Now, if you remember, irrational means that you can't put them in a fraction with, uh, with integers in the numerator and denominator. Um, and as you can see, we've got pi squareds and we've got square roots. And there was another question where I talked about the difference between rational and irrational numbers. And I said that pi and square roots were the two biggest uh, places where we could find irrational numbers. Um, so we're going to have to actually use some tricks to estimate these. And I'm going to start by estimating my pi squareds, and we can go from there. Now, I know that pi equals 3.14, or it's a little bit more than 3. That tells me that pi squared is going to be a little more than 3 squared, which is 9, and in fact, this 0.14 is going to do a little more than we think. So actually, I'm going to estimate pi squared to be 10. This is very, very close to the actual number, but this is a good mental trick to keep in mind. Pi squared is close enough to 10 that we can work with it for a problem like this. So pi squared divided by 4, I'm going to call 10 divided by 4. Pi squared over 8, I'm going to call 10 divided by 8. And now I can go ahead and evaluate these fractions. Um, 10 fourths, I can simplify down to 5 halves, which is also known as 2 and a half. 10 eighths, I can simplify down to 5 fourths. And I'm just dividing the numerator and denominator by 2 in both of these, because 2 is the biggest number that goes into both my numerator and denominator. I can uh, simplify that down to 5 fourths, which is the same thing as 1 and 1 fourth. So now I have some decently um, precise numbers to work with, and now I need to move on to my square roots. Now square roots are a bit tricky, which is why I'm going to use the magic of editing to bring up my big board. So I made this board with a list of square numbers and cube numbers. We're going to need these for several questions in this next section of gridded response problems. Um, this is a really good list to either memorize or be able to know and recall very, very quickly. Um, eighth grade deals with a lot of square numbers and cube numbers, so it's good to just know these. And I'm going to do something you might not have been expecting me to do. I'm actually going to call these... Starting with 5, I'm going to say that instead of 5, this is 5 tenths. And 5 tenths times 5 tenths actually gives me 25 hundredths. This is another trick with square numbers that if we square tenths, we get hundredths. So 6 tenths times 6 tenths gives me 36 hundredths. Um, another one that might make sense to you is 10 tenths, also known as 1 squared, equals 100 hundredths, also known as 1. 1 times 1 is 1, so that makes sense. That's one way we can know that this trick works. Now, I'm going to come over here to 14 squared equals 196. I'm going to call this 1 and 4 tenths and say that this equals 1 and 96 hundredths, which means if I'm looking for the square root of 2, then that is going to be about 1.4, or 1 and 4 tenths. Similarly, I'm going to go down to this, 289 equals 17 squared, and I'm going to say this is 1 and 7 tenths, and this is 2 and 89 hundredths. This is the closest we would get to 300, or if we put it into hundredths, just 3. So the square root of 3 is going to be about 1.7, or 1 and 7 tenths. Now this is just a trick for estimating square roots, 
based on the fact that if we turn each of these into tenths, we're going to get hundredths. So 1 and 7 tenths squared is going to get us 2 and 89 hundredths, which is about 3. And 1 and 4 tenths squared is going to get us 1 and 96 hundredths, which is very, very close to 2. But the key with estimating is we want numbers that are close enough that we can work with, not exact numbers. So the magic of editing is going to make this disappear once again. And ta-da! The square root of 2, we already said, was going to be about 1 and 4 tenths. The square root of 3, we already said, was going to be about 1 and 7 tenths. And 1 and 1 fourth, and 2 and a halfs, and 2 and 1 half, don't know why I did that. I'm going to change to their decimal forms, which is 1 and 25 hundredths, and then 2 and 5 tenths. So now that we have all of these weird irrational numbers as estimations that are decimals, and these are very, very, very close to what they actually are, so we estimated well, and using that trick that pi squared equals 10, and using the trick of uh, looking at the tenths in our list of square numbers helped us with that. Now I can go ahead and order these from least to greatest. This one is the least, this one's the greatest, and then our values go up from the least. So if I were to write the sequence of numeric labels in the same order as their corresponding quantities from least to greatest, it would be 2, 3, 4, and 1. Quantity 2 is the smallest, quantity 3 is next, quantity 4 is next, and quantity 1 is greatest. It says this sequence of numeric labels is your answer, and we need to enter our answer into the grid. For example, if the order of the numeric labels were 1, 2, 3, 4, enter the answer as just 1, 2, 3, 4 without commas. So I know that my answer is going to be 2, 3, 4, 1. So I'm going to enter that into my gridded response boxes, and I'm going to look for my 2 bubble underneath my 2, 3 bubble underneath my 3, 4 bubble underneath my 4, and my 1 bubble right here underneath my 1, and that's going to be what my answer will look like. So we had to actually estimate, do a whole bunch of estimating and saying pi squared is about 10, square root of 2 is about 1 and 4 tenths, square root of 3 is about 1 and 7 tenths, to get these in order from least to greatest, write down the order as just the numbers and put it into the gridded response section. This question is horrendous and unnecessary, but we worked through it.